Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with another edition of the American Hustler Podcast. This is going to be a little different. It's going to be a mixture of some things, and it's really based on some insipid crap that happened to me that I just got to speak on. It's going to be a burner. So before we get into that, I'm doing this free webinar, 30 days to $2,500. Hit that green bar to sign up for today's webinar. There's one. There's 12 more, so get in now. And if you want to go ahead and really get a fast start, join my Facebook group, 30 days to $2,500, and pick the lifetime membership. It's an awesome deal. This course will make you a better person. You'll have more fun, and it'll make your wallet fatter. Now, to the podcast. around on Facebook and I saw a rabbit hole yes I did I saw a rabbit hole and I was gonna walk around it but didn't walk around it jump straight in and it was some foolishness I'm not really gonna get into the specifics there's really no need but it was a cautionary reminder of how when people become wedded to a certain mindset regardless of any other evidence to go counter to that notion they're going to believe it as if it was true and if you believe that it's true your mind's going to treat it as true your body's going to treat it as it's true and you're just going to conjure up all of this energy because it was essentially another one of those discussions of what happens when black people run into police officers. And I was sitting on the sidelines and I jumped in and I was a dissenting voice and I realized that I must be an alien because these are some of the things that I have done in terms of law enforcement. I've beat 14 out of 16 tickets. I've actually yelled at a Georgia State trooper, not just like, yo, no, I actually screamed at him. And he was like, yo, yo, sir, calm down. Still here. And it made me wonder, and I, I kind of stepped back. It's like, why are my experiences so different? I don't have the, I was sitting at home eating fritos and I was arrested by a police story. I don't have one of those stories. I don't. And it's like, okay, what is it? What what really is it? Because, and it hit me, it's the way that I think. It's the way that I think because <clears throat> I've had interactions with the police. And actually, I've called the police on a few people. For me, they haven't been like crazy or life-threatening. Now, I'm going to say something that's very, very controversial. A lot of times when black people get called up by the police, they were doing shit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, the black party did not come. I thought they were going to come because the thing is, is there racism in America? Of course there is. Are there young, innocent black men that get accused of shit and they're harmed or killed because they're racist? Yep. It's happening. It's going to continue to happen. It's going to continue to happen, and it's, an, it's atrocious. It's an abomination. But you have people who are doing shit that are kind of hiding behind that. Because I'm not going to be an apologist. I mean, bad things happen to good people. You know, I do believe that Trayvon Martin was killed. The young man that was killed in Florida by Dunn, these folks were just shot because they were black. That's the beginning and end of it. But is that every case? No, (laughs) it's not every case. And that's the problem. It's a lack of accountability. And then I went a little further and I I sat back and I'm in a really, 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 really reflective mood because around 1998, 99, I had to really take stock and take accountability of my life. And typically there's been some unfair things that have happened to me as they've happened to you and they've happened to everyone else. But 
90 something percent of the time when something fucked up happens to me, I play the role. That's just the reality. I play the role. And when I stop doing certain things and exhibiting certain behaviors and putting myself in certain situations, I know it's going to sound really, really strange. Bad shit stop happening to me. I know, I know, I know. It's just like remarkable. But that's the alien thing. That's the, I'm an alien. I'm an alien. But the deeper thing that I want to get to you is we all have the power of choice. And many people behave scream lament and go on as if their personal decisions has nothing to do with the life that they live today the person that was talking that stuff i had some dealings with him and i know he's a little janky personal experience no one told me this it's just first-hand experience and i was like huh so is it possible for the police to just go off and abuse someone yeah it's been proven it happens But is it going to happen to you? School's still out on that. But let's get to the deeper issue. I'm going to use myself as a template. If you did not know, I have wonderful chocolatey skin. It's it's awesome stuff. It gets warm in the summer. It really does. It really feels good to the touch. And to me, it's an asset. I do not walk around thinking, oh, I'm fucked because I'm black. People are going to say these things and they're going to do these things to me because I'm black. I don't have that thought process. And to a great degree, I never had that thought process. I think the world that you experience, the world that you are part of, is going to be incumbent upon your decisions and how you react to the world. Because this is the thing. Most people of all persuasions are pretty preoccupied with their own damn selves. This whole thing about the conspiracy against, you know, these people. Uh, I do believe in conspiracies, but the, this is the thing about conspiracies. It doesn't take the whole group to perpetrate one. It only takes a handful of people in power. Hitler and his top brass, they almost killed the people. It wasn't they all. It wasn't every German. It was their leadership. And it was atrocious. It was wrong. And things like that will continue to happen because human beings are f- fond of stupid human tricks. It's not going to disappear, but I cannot promise you that you're not going to have bad things happen to you if you make good choices all the time. That's erroneous. That's not the truth. But I can say that if you make good choices most of the time, your life's going to be fine most of the time. Outside those random events of things that just happen. And, you know, going back to the chocolatey skin, that deep, rich chocolatey skin. I kind of look at it as an identifier that framed on how you use it is either going to be an asset or a detriment. Not so much how other people respond. You can't control how other people respond. Then again, sometimes you can. But when you choose to walk into a room and say, Hey, I'm going to walk in this room and everyone in this room is going to be cool and everyone's going to be. Chances are they are. You may run it. I will tell you, when I had my store off Lawrenceville Highway, we had a lot of really different people coming in because we were near Clarkston. We're in Tucker and there was this refugee camp not too far away. So we had any and everyone coming into the store. It's just any and everyone. Ethiopians, uh, Indians, I mean, a, all types of people, people from Bangladesh. I think, you know, to a degree, it was really, really cool because you got to see a lot of cool people. And I remember there was this one time I had this ad on Craigslist. A lady called. We we talked. She wanted the item. She came into the store and she immediately began acting funny. Just immediately. There was like an unspoken hostility hanging in the air. I didn't do anything. And in my mind, she saw that I was black, she was racist, and she just all of a sudden backpedaled out the deal and just went on by her way. I consider that a racist exchange. I consider that's exactly what happened. You could not tell me that it wasn't. And I will tell you, that was exceptionally rare. I've had white people hand me two, three, four thousand dollars cash to buy products for me. I've had white people 
Asian people, lesbians, gay guys buy stuff when we had the store invite us to their homes because they liked us so much. Part of the problem is many people are not open. They walk into a room with a closed mind and then they wonder why no one enters their life or we'll talk to them. Because <laughs> I lived in this community, the apartment community was pretty nice and they used to have events and I would go to most of them because it was always good food. I had a good relationship with the people in the leasing office and frequently I'd be the only black person there. The invitation was sent out to everyone, but I was the only one there. A lot of black people go ahead, get ready to hate, get ready to be mad, are not open to doing different shit, but get pissed off when they're not included. It's some conspiracy, you know, and if they let me back in the black group, because like I said, you know, I may get my black card revoked. I may get kicked out the club. Oh, shit. That happened in like 2000. <laughs> I lost my pass. But, you know, to a larger point, it goes back to choice. And let's let's just get away from the, uh, the race stuff and let's get really down to every human being has the capacity to make choice. On the thumbnail, I put an empty bowl. And for some people, they will see that bowl and their response would be, oh, shit, it's empty. Damn. Then other people will see that bowl and it's like, oh, it's empty. I wonder what I can put into it. If you're part of the second group, you probably have a really good life because you are someone who goes out and looks to do versus having people come to you. Because once again, if you are Rudolph and people don't let you play in their reindeer games, Sometimes it's because they are prejudiced. They don't like you. Other times it's because you have B.O. And, and B.O. mean could be a bad attitude. I've seen it. I've worked with people like this from all groups. But many people do not exercise the power of choice and mistakenly go back and reframe the experience as if something was done to them when they did it to their own damn selves. You know, I don't mean to be insensitive or indelicate with things because there are people out there who are being killed by the police, black, white, Asian, because the system doesn't care. If you are poor, regardless of your color, you're fucked. That's the system. The system doesn't care. If you're not part of that group of people who are in the have or the people who have knowledge are the group of people. Because the thing is, I learned a long time ago, if you learn the law, it's not that scary. It really isn't. There are many people who have no idea what the Constitution says, and they'll live in this country and they'll say, well, that's not for me. That's for white people or Jewish people or Asian people, as if you're not impacted by the laws that are passed in Congress or your municipality. And then when those same laws that you ignored and failed to participate in bite you in the ass, then you're pissed off and you want to blame the system. There was a salient event that happened almost 20 years ago that proved what I'm saying. You can't debunk this. You can't like, oh, it didn't happen. A big event. It literally divided a state and to some degree created division in the country. And it proved that if you had access, knew the law, that you could get away with murder. It was the O.J. Simpson verdict. Many people missed something. They were like, oh, God, he got away with murder. The Goldman family sued him. But they really, really missed something. An educated extremely wealthy black man be the murder rap. If the country was as racist as many black people portray it to be, that would have never happened, regardless of his wealth. He would have been gone from jump. It just wouldn't happen. But, you know, to choice, if you want to have a certain life, it is your choice. It's up to you. Uh, I did have some racial profiling when the same store, the Lawrenceville store, 
that's the most times that I have been stopped and harassed in my life. And I still to this day can't figure it out because it's happened nowhere else. Nowhere else. It was just there. I remember getting stopped six times in one month. And I was getting ready to go complain because it didn't make any sense. They stopped me, run my license, run, cause they ran, I already ran a tag. And I was just, what the heck is this? Then the, the last time I was in the company van, I got pulled over and she's like, well, why do you have like regular insurance? Why don't you have commercial insurance? And I was like, well, let me explain it to you. I don't have to because of the weight of this van and because of the class and because of this statute. Blah, blah. And I just read the law to her and she said, OK, sir, you have a nice day. And she left me alone and I didn't get stopped again. It's kind of funny because the thing is, I have a saying, don't hate the player, don't hate the game. Learn the fucking rules so you can win. And that is the thing. This is this is not me just talking. I'm going to give you an exercise. You I'm going to give you an exercise. For the next 30 days, I want you to conduct your life as if you were living the life that you want. You know, if you want, if you're shy and you want to be more open, be more open. Just do it. Force yourself to do it. If you are not a doer, make yourself do stuff. Just, you know, what's the saying? Fake it till you make it. For the next 30 days, be who someone who's not you. Be that person that you want to be. Also. Stop making bad decisions. Just stop making for 30 days. You know, don't make any bad decisions. If you you know, we we all know when we're making a bad decision. We know. I, I had a tweet one time. A lot of people passed around. It's like, I know what the right thing is, but sometimes acting a fool is just damn fun. And that's the reality. But once again, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's not like happenstance. It's not something that just happened. It's a choice. So do that for a few days, de- for 30 days and see what happens to your life. Going back to when I was an extreme fuck up. And there's another thing that comes into this. It's called high level of accountability. When you don't really take ownership of your life because you just can't claim the successes. You have to you have to claim the failures and I failed a lot. Then. I remember it was about a three year process for me to really move away from, oh, the world is horrible. People don't like me. You know what the problem was? I didn't like myself because I was underperforming. I wasn't even walking in the first inch of my potential. I wasn't. I was just a bum. And it's straight up, I was a bum. And I look back and I'm embarrassed and I feel bad about it, but that's who I was at that point goes to another issue you can change there's this thing well if you're always this kind of person or that kind of person that's always who you will be i don't think it's true i do think the older that you are the more resistant to change you will become but even at that level change is still possible i've got people 50 60 years old in my course who are making money and they're just like this is the most productive I've ever been. This is like, wow, you can, you can change if you want to. Going once again to the power of choice. Now, this is going to be some of the most important information that I can give you. This is going to be something that you can start with tonight. I want you to sit down and turn the television off. Turn your phone over, put it on silent and really think of the life that you want to have. Not the one you have now, but the one you really want to have. You know, if you're a guy and you want a family or you're a girl and you want a family, but you're living your life for other people because you've bought into some pseudo educational philosophy saying you should be this way when your heart is saying, I want something else. One of the hardest things to do is to have the courage to be yourself, because when you do that, you create a level of freedom and personal self-esteem that will be hard for anyone to shake. But if you keep living a life, living for other people, 
letting other people's decisions shape your life and influence your life. You have no personal reason to be mad when your life isn't what it is because you made the choice to give your power over to those other people. You made that choice. You did. And you want to, and that's the thing, because it, it's a hard, hard road to walk. It's a hard piece of road to really navigate when you start going, well, hey, I'm 42. I don't have any kids. I don't have any husband. The read would be, well, the market's bad. Pickings are slim. The truth of the matter is you never made time for a relationship. You know, you're 50 years old. You work a job you hate. And you're just like, well, the Lord didn't mean for me to have a business. Truth of the matter is, you never committed to yourself to really starting one. You would start one, you stop. You start one, you stop. You start one, you stop. You never committed to it. See, many people tell themselves these little lies to make themselves feel better. Because if you want to be successful, I'll give you the recipe. Set a goal, be committed to it, and work on it until you learn something. If you learn the way that you're working on it doesn't work, then you're going to learn some other way to work on it. And you keep doing that, that process of learning and unlearning and going forward. And one day you're going to look up and you'll be there. That's it. Many people are looking for some super slick, super special, super wonderful, magical, mythical moment that's going to be like, ah, there it is. When really success is a lot of work when no one's looking. That's what success is. It's a lot of work when no one's looking. It's when you are writing your book and everyone's at the party. It's when you are waking up at 4 a.m. to write for two hours before you go to work or take care of your family. Success is a great deal of work in the dark. It is just you and success. And you're looking at, at the table and success is over there drumming his fingers or drumming her fingers, whatever your success may be. And you're like, I'm going to get you. And it's like, I don't know about that because, you know, you don't really pay a lot of time and attention to me because see, success is a real jealous bitch. Success is like, oh, you're not going to pay me any time. You're not going to be diligent. You're not going to be committed. I'm out of here and I'm going somewhere else where I'm going to get those things. That's it. So all of this is a choice. It's not some random event. And I love how on online commentary, people use massive exceptions to prove their their premise or their thought process. Or they'll use videos six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, or they'll use statistics that are you know ten years old. When then when you go do your due diligence and you're like, oh, that's not factual. That's not factual. I was doing something and I had to get this um, research. And the thing is, in 2011, this is 2014, in 2011, you can look it up yourself, the census, 41 or 42 percent of all children that were born in the United States in 2011 were born out of wedlock. That's not black. That's not white. That's all of them. 41 percent, which is a larger trend as people are not getting married. People are not doing a family thing because, you know, even though I have all of this chocolatey skin, I have been dating others because, you know, I only think there's one race, the human race. And if you do some research on that, there's a lot of dickering with science because with scientists, because the classification didn't really come into play except around the same time as the advent of slavery. So you do the math there. But being that person who's dated others my whole life, I've gotten to know that. Everyone has shit. No one has this. Well, there's a few people that have a magical life and they were born with a silver spoon and stuff. But that's not everyone. That's actually very, very rare. Most people are struggling to some degree. They're struggling with something. I don't know how many people that I have met that they had the house. They had the car. They had the wife, the husband. They had the look, the 2.8 kids, the Yorkie. And then when you start peeling back the layers It's chaos. Then I've met people who had that look and you peel back the layers and their life was actually better than you thought. So until you get to know these people and really, really hang out, be with them, 
you don't really know what the real deal is. And a lot of people like to make assumptions because that's much easier than doing the real work of getting to know someone. I had a Jewish roommate, Derek Shop, was in the military. We used to have these long philosophical conversations about life. And Derek, and this is one of the times that I was like starting my businesses because first five businesses I started, they failed. Just, <laughs> I didn't know what the hell I was doing. That's pretty much what it was. And, you know, I was doing one of the ideals and this was business number five. And he said, you are too much of a prince. And I said, what are you talking about? And he says, you want to be liked more than you want to make money. And I was just like really, really, really insulted. And the reason I wasn't so that was true. That was one of the that was one of the lessons I learned. And uh, business number, yeah, business number six, which actually came some years later, many years later actually, because there was a big gap between business one through five, then six, a huge gap really, of about eight nine years. And I still carried that one well, because I remember that I was just like. He was right. Sucked ass, but he was right. And that's just one of the things that you learn when you make the choice to move forward. Because business number six wouldn't have been successful without the failures of business one through five. Just wouldn't have been that way. Because I learned, and even though I was working the job, I still read Entrepreneur Magazine. I still read Inc. And I still thought about it for years and years and years. And when my life melted down, I came up with a better plan because see, this is another thing going back to choice. Many people, and I know it's going to sound crazy. It's going to sound like I'm sitting here drinking some elixir that's made me lose my common sense. Many people are abundantly unaware of the choices that they can make in their life. Sounds crazy, but they're abundantly unaware of the choices many people feel that they have to do certain things and part of this is tribalism like if uh, you're black and black folks inherently are supposed to do things a certain way like you know the black mother the black father something i found out since you know i engage and entertain others other groups other backgrounds is good fathers good mothers good people have similar traits across the board similar traits across the board but people cling to certain things as an identifier versus saying I'm going to create my own identifier once again it's a choice it's easier to adopt the status quo because I'm going to tell you something you don't want to hear that religion you have unless you picked it later in life your parents picked it for you Certain outlooks, certain hobbies that you enjoy, you didn't pick them. They were given to you by your parents. And I'm not saying don't enjoy them. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just letting you know that many of the things that you're doing, you think you chose, you didn't. (laughs) You didn't choose them. You was unaware that you had the choice. And that's why if you're a very precocious child and you realize that you can choose, your parents don't like you. Because you realize, I can pick stuff. And it was like, no, 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 no. And then, you know, you have the uh, parental uh, respect deal. Because if they're feeding you, they're clothing you, and you're under their roof, you need to follow their rules. Because you can still realize that you have the power of choice. But the thing is, you have to realize that for you to fully exercise that choice, you need to get the fuck out of their house. And that's something that I've seen to be problematic for many people now. Years ago, I was dating someone and things were going well. Then it just kind of came time to like hang out at each other's house. And she was like, you can't come to my house. And I was like, why? Well, I live with my mother and she doesn't think I should date. This woman was 32 years old. And I was just like, she lost like 50 zillion cool points. Let's just like, but I still hit it. (laughs) I still hit it, but I didn't keep it serious. And. I have learned. I have really, really learned. I I will give you another moment of choice. When I was, my life burnt down around my feet and it was just nothing but I was choking on ashes every day. I remember having this conversation with my mom 
I was just telling her all the bad stuff that was going on. Well, I was telling her some of it. I didn't tell her at the time. Oh, Carl there was homeless. I'm just that things are bad. That's what it was. And she was like, you know, all good mother. She's like, well, you can come home. And I was like, mm-mm. I need to stay up here and figure this out. That was a choice. A choice made a long, long time ago. That's one of the reasons, you know, if you want to call me arrogant, you, you can. It, it's valid because I am. And I didn't get arrogant because I woke up one day and it's like, oh, I'm arrogant. No, it, it didn't happen. It's like I worked my ass out of from being fucking homeless to owning a business. To me, that's some awesome shit. To some other people, that's just like, well, anyone can do that. Maybe, maybe not. Until you do it, we don't know. Now, do we? So that choice made in pain, made on a bad rainy day, because I remember it, because I was calling on a freaking, that's when there was phone booths were ubiquitous. You know, I was calling from a phone booth, long distance. That choice I made on that rainy, horrible day is the reason I'm talking to you today. It's all about choice. And the minute that you start picking up your life and making these hard choices, these things that they're not sexy, uh, people are not going to pat you on the back. Some of your choices that are appropriate for you are actually going to create a lot of dissension in your family and friend circles because people are part of a larger tribe and anytime a tribe member starts to like put on different war paint and, and like change up their tattoos and change up their carvings the tribal leadership is like little running bear is not little running bear he wants to be called paul who the fuck is paul you will create problems being authentic and true to yourself this isn't to be confused with you running around little bears like breaking the old elders across the head and stealing their peace pipe. No, this is not to be confused with bad behavior. This is you saying, I want to be Paul or I want to be this or I want to be that. And it's not illegal. It's not wrong. It's just culturally not accepted. And this is what's the other powers, powerful thing of choice. When you go through that and just, you know, soon as you listen to this, you're going through this right now. You know, if you're listening to this channel, you're getting a different thought process. You tell people these concepts. They think you're crazy. Uh, I've actually had people email me. It's like my wife. She hates that I listen to you. And I remember one email. It's like this guy. He, he, was, he didn't really identify who it was. It was just like I think he said my girl. It's like she's like, why are you always listening to that guy? He's just stupid. If his life wasn't so good, he wouldn't be on YouTube. You will get that. You know, and I'll, I'll give you a little secret. I listen to talk radio. I listen to all of them on occasion. I listen to Rush Lumbaugh, Sean Hannity, uh, was Neil Bortz and other people. Well, Neil, Neil's gone. And I don't listen because I like him. I used to listen because I like him because they were all different in the late 80s, early 90s. They were all very different. They were more authentic. They were more honest. I listen to them because I'm no longer a hater. I used to be a hater. And when you hate, you cannot relate. And when you can't relate, you can't learn. So I sit here and I was like, okay, why is it that these guys are sitting in these chairs in these studios and all they're doing are is talking? They're not creating any products. Their product is talk and dissension and derision. That's their product. And people are buying it up by the lap load because all of these guys make eight figures, not seven figures, not six figures. They make eight figures. And I was like, huh, what is it? What is it? And I asked myself, what is it? And I listened to them. And I'm not listening because I believe the drivel that they're pushing. Because, like I said, if earlier in this podcast, if you're poor, you're fucked. If you don't know how to learn, if you don't know how to read and comprehend very well, you're fucked. Unless you just fucked. There's a lot of people who never went to school, have way more intelligence and something really more important than intelligence, the ability to act, the ability to create action and push themselves forward in life that will do better than some people with PhDs who, without that framework, that system, they can't survive. There are many academics, and I've seen this because I've dated some, without that that environment they're like really worthless 
it is like strange because, you know, on campus and they're in there, it's great. But you pull them out their environment and they've got to like actually do some shit or problem solve. It's like watching a fish on the table flap and open this mouth like, blah, blah, I can't do nothing. I can't do nothing. I'm like, get me back in the water because I'm going to die. I mean, I've seen that. So another thing about choice is you can choose to be a person of action or you can be a choose to be a person of words now this is the one of the things about the great united states of america if you do it well enough because it's not what you do it's your execution you can make a shitload of money either way going back to talk radio going back to michelle macon glenn beck i study all these people because i'm like why are these people making so much money but if you go from the vantage point of hate like okay it's just racist they're just mean No, no, there's more to it because you cannot have an environment without an ecosystem. These guys are feeding into an ecosystem. There's a support system for what they have to offer. And I was like, huh, because people want to hear opposing views. People get tired of political correctness. People get tired of a lack of authenticity. People get tired of things being wrapped up. So that's why Howard Stern is successful. You can be an exceptionally intelligent and blunt asshole and make an incredible amount of money because people are tired of listening to sanitized content. Here's this channel, the podcast. You know, I get, I've been getting it every year. I've been on. Glendon, you cuss too much. Glendon, you really need to cut back on the profanity. There are many videos I don't even cuss once. I don't sit down like, you know, In this video, I'm going to put 30 fucks, um, nah, 28 fucks, and two motherfuckers. Nah, nah, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. 25 fucks, five motherfuckers, and two shits, and four hot dams. Yeah, that's it. That's going to be the format for that. No, I just sit down and go, and what comes with what comes. And I'm cool with that because it's a choice. See, I'm not going to go like, well, you know, it just, no, it's a choice. I know myself very well. I use profanity and I have family members who don't like it. And typically like the older folks, I don't really do it around them. And, you know, I'm like my aunt bunny, I don't know what she's going to do with me, but the whole deal is it's a choice and it's about introspection and it's about awareness. The stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum, but with that choice, I know when I say, you know, 25 fucks, five motherfuckers, two shits, and four hot dams that there's going to be a certain person that's going to come to the channel and they're going to go, ooh, good, mm-mm. click, pass, and they're going to move on. And that's their choice. That's 100% authentic. It's not that they're a bad person. It's not that I'm a bad person. It's their choice and they're exercising it. And I'm not mad at anyone for exercising their choice. They're saying that content isn't for me. But if you're still here and you're listening to this and you like it and you're nodding and you like, okay, yeah, I'm going to be back tomorrow because I need to check out the rest of this stuff. Then this content is for you. Another thing with choice, you can't be all things to all people. When you get over your intrinsic need to be liked, you can be incredibly successful in all facets of your life. Money, family, women, men, if you so desire, because people can be comfortable with you because you're not putting on an act. That's why nice guys finish last, because it's an act. They're not really nice. They're, They're playing the game. And just like dog can pick up on fear, women can pick up on insincerity because that's what it is. And it's just like, oh, he just met me, but he's going to buy me a car. How many other women have he done this for? Well, you know, I need a car, so I'm going to take it, but I ain't going to fuck him. <laughs> I mean, this stuff happens. So if you're looking at your life and you're wondering why you don't have the things you want, uh, things aren't moving in the direction that you want. Check your choices. Every time my life gets screwed up, I just go back on the timeline. I say, okay, you made this choice at this intersection. Ah, and this is what happened. And I vector it out. And that's what happened. But once again, 
you can make a bad choice and then later on you can make a better choice and correct that unless you kill someone then you know that's final then I, I can't help you but when you start taking ownership which is a choice I keep using that choice word the c word that it gives you power you don't feel helpless you don't feel woe is me you don't feel that because i'm black i'm fucked you don't feel that because you're like okay i can facilitate change i can have ownership because i look at the world and i'm gonna tell you and then this was somebody told me about this i knew the story but i'm gonna bring it up um i don't know if you know the story of sam cook but he was killed and the reason sam was killed because sam made some choices that were very very uncommon for any artist black or white back in the day sam owned himself he owned his label he owned his work he owned his masters when i worked in the hospital i had the great privilege of being around curtis mayfield and he told me some similar stuff and that is one of the reasons that you know people like hey you know your new stuff's not on amazon it's a choice because i have a different plan and the plan is for me to own me because what I knew of Sam Cook and what I knew of Curtis Mayfield, when you make those choices and they're not real popular because the thing is, go ahead and wholesale your work. And I'm not even going to say the game is dirty. I'm not even going to say it's wrong. There, there's a contract and the due diligence is upon you to get an attorney to read that and make sure that your interests are protected. But when I learned these lessons Everything said to me was make sure that you keep ownership of all of your stuff. Like the only book deal I would do today would be one where I maintain rights to audiobooks, I maintain rights to ebooks, and I would do I would sell the hard copy rights. Because I would give you the, like Curtis Mayfield, he he broke it down. I didn't know a song had three parts. There was the publishing, there was the royalty, and the lyrics, I believe. And each part can be sold. He said, you can strip this off and sell this and this and this. Same similar things with publishing. Audiobook, ebook, print book. There's there's a lot of things you can do when you're a creative person, which is a choice. And this is one of the reasons that I've kind of come back to myself. Because as a kid, I used to love to draw, paint. I uh, actually won a few awards in school. I was in commercial art for a few years. And I love this creative space and it's a choice. And many people are like, well, the reason that Glendon left the storage auction business was because, you know, he failed, failed, failed. And that wasn't it. I made a choice July 17th, 2009, that I wanted to be a writer. It was a conscious choice. It was a choice made in a, there was a bunch of controversy with that. Um, some things happened. Some relationships were severed. But I look back and I have to smile because it was the best choice for me. And it's a choice that continues to give dividends year after year after year. But it was a choice that was made in a hard space. Uh, at the time, my partner had cancer. I was helping her. It was just so many things going on. And when you learn to make good choices for yourself in the middle of chaos, you will learn to appreciate and love yourself more than you ever did before. Because when you make it, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be a lot of stuff that you're going to have to deal with. But that's just going to create a lot of resilience in you as a human being. So just think about this. Just think about what you heard. Just think about some of these things I dropped on you. Because if you want that life of design and you want that life of intent, I'm here to tell you that all of the bad choices that you made are going to have to be dealt with as you move forward so you can move forward and have success but those choices they're going to keep popping up they're going to keep popping up until you deal with them it's just the reality and it, it's weird because i look back and i'm really glad that for the most part i led a life on the straight and narrow i really did because it was just like you know i've never been drunk i know people a lot think he's lying i've never been high and there's a lot of stuff i never did and i'm real glad i did because it was like oh man you just you should do that looking back it was a good choice not to do it because there was less things i had to clean up so just think about that and really really think about your choice all right this is glennon cameron i will see you on the good side be sure to subscribe like comment and share